My name is Sarah Fultz. Hello, my name is Jonathan Paul Jackson. I'm co-curator of Texas Emerging. In this first volume of Texas Emerging, the caliber of artists' works combine with their innate sense of altruism towards fellow artists and within the greater art community that link these artists together. Whether by curating exhibitions for fellow artists, organizing art shows to raise funds for charitable causes, running studio spaces for other artists, or having produced public artworks. Each of their individual efforts and dedication to the arts in Texas is impressive, and in return, we wanted to celebrate these five artists just as they have inspired so many others. I first approached Ronald L. Jones' work in a public park about three and a half years ago. I was instantly fascinated. I was curious to know who had the intensity to do a string installation in a public park knowing that it might rain or the wind might take it away. Those types of artists are artists I'm infatuated with, so I had to find him. Similarly, I have been aware of Ronald's installations in public parks and, and a couple different venues in Houston over the past few years and have been dreaming about an opportunity to work with Ronald. A site-specific sculpture that utilizes a color palette reminiscent of the late 1980s culture to symbolize the cavernous environment of childhood and early adolescent trauma and how they sculpt individuals. The sculpture addresses the clashes of consciousness and subconscious through additional dueling color palettes of acknowledgement and acceptance, as well as the utilization of a creative practice as a vehicle to address past traumas. The installation serves as a figurative manifestation of the artist's mind a gateway which makes the individual's trauma visible within the context of the gallery space and exhibition. Knowing that eventually, in several weeks, this piece will be taken down is, is hard to believe. Matt Manalo was born in 1984 in the Philippines and grew up in Houston, attending U of H Fine Art. He is a first-generation immigrant and a lot of his work explores the concept of home between time in Texas and in the Philippines. He is a multidisciplinary artist incorporating painting, drawing, sculpture, photography, printmaking into his works. A lot of raw materials and found objects are incorporated into his projects making him interesting as an environmentally conscious artist. Um, a lot of times people will donate objects for him to use in his installations. He's also the founder of the Philippine X Artists of Houston, which is an artist collective here, and he runs the A-Leaf Art House. I first met Matt probably about seven years ago and have been curating shows with him ever since. Uh, he's one of the most interesting artists to work with because, again, like Sarah said, the use of materials is right up my alley. I like to use repurposed materials in my work as well, and so whenever I find another artist that can also use repurposed materials, but in a way that I'd never seen before, I'm interested in working with him. Matt's contribution to this com art community has been far beyond anything I've, I can contribute in with the addition to the A-Leaf Art House, which is an amazing shipping container in A-Leaf Tech, where he displays emerging artists from the area.
Next, we're going to be taking a look at work by Teresa Escobedo, who was born in 1985 in Houston. She's a graduate of U of H and a multidisciplinary artist, curator, and art administrator. Currently, she's managing the Civic Art Collection for the Mayor's Office of Cultural Affairs. We were very excited to have Teresa participate in this exhibition by including her photography along with an installation that is called An Afrenda for Our Wounded Hearts. In her artwork, there's an intersection of ancestry, history, spiritualism in relation to ideas of place, land, nature, and the act of pilgrimage. Teresa's work combines her cultural heritage with intellect and emotion, demonstrating the different spiritual perspectives and cosmopolitan influences that affect her work. The photography is from a series entitled Journeying, Land, Memory, and the Realm of the Spirit, which is an ongoing photographic series documenting the artist's spiritual evolution and personal journey towards intergenerational healing. Teresa's work talks about an idea of spiritualism that I had never really touched on before. I feel every time I talk with Teresa or look at her work, I feel I get a little bit more educated on the Spanish influence and history. Okay, next we're going to be looking at works by Tom Bandage, who was born in 1992 in Austin and recently relocated to Houston. He is an incredible sculptor, but his background is in computer science and studio art which makes perfect sense once you start looking at the geometric detail and precision that is used to create his works. He really attempts to create the shape of thought through his geometric contortions of materials. And each work in itself is a concept as he's interested in materiality and taking traditional construction materials out of context and elevating them into an abstract idea in real space. I met Tom Bandage four years ago at a warehouse he ran with another friend. He allowed artists to come in and use studios, sometimes permanently, sometimes hourly. Um, but I had a show at this warehouse, and the organizer of the show was kind of dropping the ball, and Tom stepped in with his group, and they pretty much got the show up and ready for me. And seeing that kind of determination was really inspiring, uh, mainly because that was the first time we had met. We had no personal contact beforehand but he decided to step in and really help a fellow artist out. Next, we're gonna take a look at Works by Duel, who is a well-known Houston-based street artist who got his BFA from University of Houston. You're immediately struck by the colorful, hard-edged abstraction, but once you take a closer look, you'll start to realize that there are pieces of inspiration coming from all different aspects of his life, from personal experiences and pop culture, comics, human figures, plants, animals, all kinds of different things that have been reduced to their simplest form in line and shape and reorganized into these abstracted compositions. They're very playful, but they allow the viewer to interpret forms on their own. Duel begins with an idea and completes the imagery in his mind before he breaks it apart in his very precise process. Duel uses a consistent visual language throughout his works, which makes it recognizable. And his meticulous process using aerosol, acrylic, and latex paint makes his work truly unique. As far as color goes, I think he's my favorite colorist in the city. No one else paints like him. He really tries to take painting to the next step using basic materials, not trying to use computer graphics, not trying to use anything digitally. He makes these analog paintings that blow digital art out of the water. Thanks so much for joining us today as we walked through Texas Emerging Volume 1. The exhibition will be on view for four weeks starting July 24th through the end of August with opportunities to view the works in person and meet the artists by appointment. For more information on the artist or individual works available for sale, please visit foltsgallery.com.